In this episode, we're talking to Johnny Baino, a lifelong Somerville resident. John talks about his experience growing up in the Mystic Housing Projects, his connection with the Winter Hill Gang, and the effects of drugs, violence, and friendship on the city he loves. It says, uh, you know, you're in, you're in our territory, you know, and all of a sudden, off comes the, the glasses and... <laughs> The other side of Johnny Bano comes out. What the heck do you want? Are oh, you looking for trouble? Well, you got it. So we bring you Dirty Old Boston. I'm sitting here today with John Bano. He is <coughs> a close friend of my dad's and my family's. And uh, everybody told me that I had to sit down with him and talk about some of his stories from his life. So welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Were you a fighter growing up? Did you get yeah. in a lot of fights? Yeah, I got in a lot of fights, but not with the kids in the projects, usually outside. The kids that you hung out with in the projects, were they, was it like a little crew? Yes. How many of you guys? Yeah, let me see. Was it that We you had would... the 580 gang, which were a beautiful bunch of guys. You had the River Road gang, and then you had the old projects. The old projects were different, different you have to remember, but we're going back in the... 50s and 60s, and uh, and there was another crew. Were they the same ages, though? Or were yeah, they... uh, basically, yeah. And yeah. what was the age, like 15, 16? Well, the, 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 the 580 crowd, they were they started when they were around 14, 15, 16 years old. And they, they would just hang together. They were on one side of the street, and we were on the other side. Memorial Road was the split, because when I moved in, there was no new projects. It just, they built it while we were, we were living there. So, uh, well, we all got along great, except when the River Road Gang would chase us and uh, we'd have to run because... They were the toughest. Oh, oh, yeah, they'd slap you around. They didn't really hurt you, but they well, would slap you around. what crew were you guys? I was the old projects. You were the old projects, yeah. okay. Yeah, they couldn't catch me. I, we, 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 we had a ball. Grow- that was the best time of my life was growing up in the housing projects. And, but the funny part about it was we were coming up to... We, we were hiding in the cellar. And uh, I was sort of short and stocky back then, and uh, I couldn't get into the pipes. That's where you could hide in the pipes. Nobody would see you. So I finally got into the pipes. I could fit into the pipes, so then nobody thought I would, was up there. So all of a sudden, I'm hiding, and he says, let's go. He's not up here. All of a sudden, you hear, <laughs> the pipes break. I slide down, water is gushing all over the place, it's all over me. I look at everybody when we all start running. We're running for the high heels. So you broke the pipe oh, yeah, in the yeah, basement yeah, of the project, yeah, the yeah, water pipe. The water pipe, yeah. <laughs> Nobody had water for a boat. They had to call in all the maintenance guys to fix it. <laughs> so what happens is my friend Louie is coming back from Camp, I think it was Camp Clapathon, a Camp Wing. And he goes, uh, and he's coming in, he's got his bag over his shoulder, he's got his hat, he's with his, grand, his grandfather and his mother and his sisters. And, and he's coming in, and all of a sudden we come up, and we're all soaking wet. He goes, what happened? I just looked at him, I said, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> We all started running, and we ran over to McCarthy's Ledge, which was probably, I don't know, a quarter of a mile, but we're running at top speed. We finally get to the McCarthy's Ledge, and I figured somebody, Marty or somebody, would be behind me. Who's behind me but Louie? I says, Louie, you just came home from camp. He goes, I know, Johnny, but I saw you guys running, and I had to be with you. <laughs> that was the closeness of, of growing up in the housing project. You did everything together. You shared everything when we were younger, the River Road Gang would chase us and the 580 guys. In fact, we were. <laughs> it's a Friday, and uh, this kid, Mikey Tiberi, yells out, Come on, Bano, we, we got to go. The, the River Road Gang's after us. I, I don't even you know. I'm on the... Memorial Road separated us from the new projects and old projects. Okay. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there was the new projects, and here's the old projects. Well, what happens is... We run. The next thing you know, we're on Mr. Gavin. We're on a bus going to Method Square. <laughs> Why are we going? You know, what are we going to? So we get to Method Square, and he says, "This is crazy." You know, what are they going to? Well, they got a couple of the guys, and they gave them pink bellies. They didn't go away <laughs> for a week. Their, 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 their stomachs were like black and blue. I mean, they didn't punch them or anything. They gave them like pink bellies. Oh, it was it was really a, a riot. I said, "They're not catching me." And then as we got older... So you ran all the way to oh, Memphis Square. We, well, we so got, you wouldn't get a pink Oh, bag. absolutely. Right <laughs> into Memphis Square. Yeah, but we were fortunate, too. We had a guy, Tom Vassell. Tom Vassell came into the housing projects, and uh, I never forgot the first time I met him. We were playing a game. He came over. He's in corduroys, desert boots. 
He's got on a shirt, a tie, a vest, a corduroy coat. And I said, who is this jackass? Well, I didn't say that, but worse. I says, oh, I hope he's not going to interrupt our game. He, he, sure, and of course he did. I said, John Baino here? Sammy Greenwood here? You know, we're playing. I says, oh, Sammy. Uh, we'll go over and say hi and get rid of this guy. So we went over. Uh, hi, hi, hi. Well, can we do something for you? Yeah, I'd like to meet you. I'm going to be running the uh, Elizabeth PVD house. And uh, I just want, I heard your name mentioned. I wanted to come over and introduce myself. Well, nice to meet you, uh, but we got to play ball. He says, let me see the ball. I told him the ball. He says, uh, go out for a pass. Oh, yeah? Okay, I'll fix this guy. I'm going to run forever. I'm running and I'm running and I look. And all of a sudden comes a 60-yard spiral. Well, that got my attention. I went, uh-oh, wait a minute. I might have this guy all wrong. And sure enough, he became one of the most loved and respected man in the projects. He came, I think he lived, came from Arlington. He went, he ended up going to Columbia after he left us and became a professor. But he was, I and mean. you think he really cared about the kids? Oh, he, lo- he was fabulous. Yeah. There isn't anybody who grew up in the projects that knew him. Tom Bass. That would say a bad word about him. Nobody. Yeah. I mean, you can ask your father, you can ask anybody. Tom Vassell, when he said, he got kids out of trouble, he, everybody respected him. You, you really respected him. We had a great time with him. He was a tremendous guy. Tremendous guy. Take us. He take us to different places. Took us up to Duncan Beach. We used to go up to Duncan Beach. It was up in uh, New Hampshire, and there'd be like twelve of us. And it's the projects, and you know. And then you had the uh, kids from New Hampshire, and of course, we're starting to clash. Right. So I finally got everybody together. I says, "Look at they, these guys keep staring at me like they're going to beat me up." We were we were like fifteen, sixteen, seventeen years old. You know, it's hard to make us stop. So uh, what they did was they parted my hair down the middle, okay, like like alfalfa. Yeah. Okay, and they put glasses on me, and I look. And we're at the beach. We're at a lake, you know, Duncan Beach, and uh, so I walked in and I said, can I have something to drink? You know, I'm supposed to be, be playing the part of the right. swaggy nerd right, the type nerd, guy. Yeah. yeah. So of course one of them comes over and says. Uh, you know, you're in, you're in our territory, you know. And all of a sudden, off comes the, the glasses and <laughs> the other side of Johnny Bano comes out. What the F do you want? Oh, you're looking for trouble? Well, you got it. Guys! Because they're all waiting to fight these guys. Yeah. It never happened because before you could blink an eye, Tom Vassell was there. Tom goes, get over here now, all of you. And, and like I said, we weren't afraid of him physically. Yeah. It was, we're not, you know, you just didn't disrespect Tom Vassell. Right. You know, he, he just walked on water. I remember the River Road Gang, the, the worst gang in the, in the projects, you know. They were very, they loved Tom. Tom was very well respected. If you hit, if you bothered Tom, then you got 9,000 people coming after you. You know, he was that type of man, just very well respected. Who do you think was the toughest neighborhood? You know, Southie, Charlestown, who really had the toughest kids? That's that's a hard one because there's so many there's so many different uh, cities. Like Charlestown was small, but they had a lot of blue collar, hard working guys that could rock and roll. Salty was the same way. Uh, Charlestown, South, Somerville, Medford, Medford had some real tough guys. Uh, Arlington, I, I knew I knew some Arlington, kids. Arlington, not so much. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I hung around with two kids that were, were people were petrified of them. But it was basically the Boston areas. What do you say to people that make the argument about Somerville? That, hey, you know, the prices are going up and all this, but it's not a bad thing. There's less drugs around. You don't have to worry about getting beat up. You, it's safe everywhere you go. The, the, the problem with that is the people who don't have to, are moving out or they're moving into small, smaller quarters. And I don't understand. A friend of mine says, ah. Oh, my grandfather built a house in 19-something for $27,000, and we just sold it for $1,250,000. I says, where's my gun? Because I'm going to shoot you. Because <laughs> I don't have a house that was built for $27,000. It made, you know, it made $200,000, 200, yeah. $1,200,000. I mean, that's the point I don't like about it. There's so much money being made by people that are coming from outside. The people that are moving in and buying these high-end houses think that they run the city now. 
do not, a, 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 a kid on a bike uh, yelling at me. Yelling, I said, I'll get, out, I'll get out of this car <laughs> and I will break the, break the bike right over your head. Every coin has two sides. And so one side, they regulate the neighborhoods. They do what they think is right. I'll tell you a very quick story. A girl came up crying. She was an Italian girl, crying her eyes out. And there was just myself and Sal. And I said, uh, I didn't say anything. She says, are you Mrs. Belinga? He goes, yes. They, the cops won't do anything. The, 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 these five guys are yelling and screaming and calling my father names or my mother. We're, we're from Italy. And, and she was up. The, she lived up the street. No, she lived in the, in the abs. The abs is East yeah. Somerville, yep. Connecticut Ave, when, you know, uh, uh, down by going towards Sullivan Square. So they uh, had all this, and uh, Sal says, well, uh, I'll see what I can do. So about half an hour later, he says, get in the car, let's take a ride by. We go by, and they're they looking at him, and they're working on a motorcycle. And, it was and what aggressive. kind of guys were they? Were they like bikey they, they guys? Were, yeah, yeah. They, they, were they, they, they were punks is what they were. You know, punks. And there's punks in every city. And so they said, they looked over and they saw said, they said, Keep going, old man. Keep going. Oh, I went, uh-oh. This is not going to be good for them. <laughs> the, 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 the Italian people have just had the best score of their life. <laughs> Because he just went back up Winter Hill. He got uh, he got this guy, Mario, a guy named Archie, and this other guy who they were, oh, top, top, top. Were they guys. big guys or they yeah, were just? Yeah, yeah. M- Mario was like uh, five foot eight and six feet wide, all muscle, powerhouse. You know, he could lift up buildings. Archie was like six, six. Uh, he had a hearing aid in his ear, uh, and nobody knew he was one of the best street fighters around. I loved Archie. Archie was one of the nicest, nicest men around. But Sal knew who to get, and he got this other guy who was just nasty, nasty man. So he went back. Sal says, the old man's back. Oh, it was they, terrible. And you all drive back in that car? Oh, in, in Sal's car. Okay. Right Are you the, in the car? Oh, yeah. I had to sit. I had that. And he okay. says, you stay in the car. You understand? I don't want you getting in any trouble. You're, so what was it that they wanted to keep you out of trouble? What was they, were, they were in a, You they just were, weren't in the mix, and they didn't need I you would, to be in they, the mix. They, they didn't want me in trouble. Okay. They they kept an eye. You ever see the Bronx Teal? Yeah. I'm the kid that that was Colosio. That was yeah with yeah. Charles Palmateri. Yep. Okay. Myself and this other kid, Vinny Vinny Champy. We were they they basically took good care of us and. Uh, okay, but, so you pull up in the car. Yeah, and, and they get out. And does he say? Does Sal say anything to you before They're, you no, get there? No, this is the what car. we're gonna do. This is what's gonna happen. No, 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 he just says, no, We no, gotta no. deal with something. He says uh, we got a problem, boys. Uh, you got, uh, we've got some guys we've got to okay. take out. And he says, you, sit in the back. I don't want you getting out. We'll take care of this. And it was, oh, it was a massacre. They beat the crap out of them. So, did you so, ever screw up or think you were going to get in trouble with uh, the Hill guys? No. Said the wrong thing? No, 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 accident, no. You know? I, 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 I really didn't. Like I said, I was, I was more sports. Do you think that they were fair, even guys? Sometimes you hear the reputations of, like, yes. they get yes. mad and they fly off the handle and then something no, happens. No, uh, uh, the, t- the two guys who were running it were, uh, were, like, honorable. Right. He's a man's man, and that's what they were. Right. You know, I, I watched them in action. You didn't pull the crappy stuff. You knew better than that, you know, and... Uh, uh, and the cops used to come to them. The cop came to me one time, and um, I'm up there, and he could, this detective called me over. And the, the, the guys that are running uh, the hill, running the city, running everything, but they wanted to know who stole the car down the projects. I says, what? You think I'm going to give up my territory down the projects about a stolen car? Is there something wrong with you? So one of them says, get in the car. Well... The two guys came down and said, what do you think you're taking him? Oh, well, oh, is he with you? Uh, yeah, he's with us. That's right. Now get out of here. These are two detectives. Now get out of here and stay out of here. Most people would go to the would go to the hill before they would go to the cops. The hill would settle it like that. The bank robbing stuff that started to come out of Charlestown, did some of the guys jump in those crews? Yeah, yeah. And would that connect it all back to the hill stuff? Uh, yeah. Because they had to have an okay to be able to yes, do that. Yes, yes. Yeah, everything okay. went, everything was, was... So those guys were kind of wild on their own, but they had to, they had get, to get an okay. It, 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 in, in, that, in that world, you, you know, we're going to do this, you better get some permission. You didn't, you just didn't go out and book. 
you didn't you didn't just go out and book. You had to get permission. Then you had to work for somebody. And you had to give them a piece. Well, of what you yeah, made. this what I I went up to one of my the, one of the, the two big guys and I said, uh, you know, I'm not working. Uh, I want a book. They laughed. <laughs> they went, what? You want a book? No, 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 no. You're not booking. And these are the two biggest guys around. You're not booking. They says, what's in there? I says, I, I don't have a car. I'm out of work. I, I got, okay. So it, it within, we'll say, uh, eight hours. I had a car. I had $500 in my pocket in one of the best jobs in the city that was supposed to go to somebody else. But this one guy said, no, no, bain has got the job. And I, I had it made. So the, really did. the tough guys, the hill guys, did they, how did that play out longer for them? Like, did they, most of them end up okay? Did a lot of them end up going to jail or... A lot of them went to jail. A lot, a lot of them went to jail, unfortunately. Uh, and they would just get bagged on drugs. Or what well, they, it what was. Would, uh, we'll say. Is uh, it a tough life to maintain? I guess I, I could see. Yeah, how, like yeah, yeah. It a lot of booking, them, right? a lot of um, robbing banks, armored cars, uh, basically uh, uh, <clears throat> loan shocking. Would they get a lot of money? Like, how much money could they make if they oh, robbed a bank? Say you say oh, eighty thousand uh, and split it up with what the four guys? What, well, how many guys were involved in it? Okay, um, I, I was I wasn't in that world. I didn't. Could they hold on to that money though? Or no, they, yeah, they, would yeah, be yeah. they, they, they spent it. They, they, they spent it. Right. Yeah, they would. They would spend it because they know. were just cowboys. Yeah. Well, like I told you earlier, the kid that owed them fourteen thousand dollars and took off. Yeah. He came back. He snuck back into the city and then snuck out. And he snuck out on my name because I went up and asked him, you know, can he, he wants to pay the bill and he wants to get back to Somerville. And unfortunately, the guys that asked me are good friends of mine. And uh, he snuck in and he snuck out the little the creep. And uh, this is the this is the same the same guy. Uh, his mother went on vacation, and he so she, when she went on vacation, he sold all her furniture in the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> and then I told you he he had a '63 Austin Haley, and he's so stupid. I, I went to buy it because I loved convertible. I still have convertibles. Uh, he uh, he took the car and uh, he burnt it. He burnt the Austin Hill. He had 63 Austin Hill. To try and get insurance money. Oh, yeah, he was going to get the insurance money. Unfortunately, he didn't have any uh, fire and death insurance. <laughs> and he lost he lost the car and the money. And, uh, you know, too bad for you. A beautiful, beautiful car like that. You don't you don't burn them. Just too nice of a car. And well, like who was the guy that robbed the hilltop? Oh, some of your father's good friends. Yeah. My, uh, Mikey, his kid Larry, and... Uh, and they were a crew, and they were... Yeah, they shot a cop, so a cop got shot. It was either a cop got shot or the armored car got shot. Then they brought the money back and put it in this guy Larry's house. And I think out of all that that went on, I think they got either sixty or $80,000. Okay. That had to be split up. I mean, and for the, what the consequences were, it wasn't worth it. And I always, my father always, you know, would say, it's Johnny... You're going to get ten thousand dollars. That'll 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 go through your, your, your in three months. You'll be broke. Right. And and you're facing you you're your facing prison, ten yeah. to fifteen years in jail. Yeah. What the hell good is that? And but uh, Bulger, no, Bulger was um, he was in he was in Salty. He was in Salty. He didn't. I don't think um, he came to. He might have came to Winter Hill once, but he said, supposedly, from what I heard, he set up these guys to go away. Right. Squealed on them. Set them up to go away, and then he then he was going to take over. Uh, and he and he had some jackasses with them, but he had some good guys with them. But I, I they they kept me away from that crowd. Right, you don't want to be with that crowd. And and and, and you saw what happened. They had shootouts. Well, why do you think he became the most famous, notorious? Because he was a, he was a, a bully. He was a nasty, nasty guy. Unfortunately, and he had a brother Billy, who I met once, who was a real gentleman completely different right. and he had another brother Jackie and I met him once I don't even know if they re would remember me but I remember them because of the last name but um, but he, he, he you know he's running these 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 uh, projects of his you know like selling selling or? yeah selling cocaine here selling this here selling that here selling hot stuff he's 
fooling around with young girls. Uh, and he became the guy that just anything that happened had to go through him. Right. Is, those, is that the way now, that it would work? Well, is that, that, they would start doing when, it themselves. That, but that's when but everybody they went away. Piece of everything. But that's when everybody went away. Because he was informing on them. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's the, that's basically what happened. He was informing on everybody, and uh, the man that that I that was the head of everything said to me, every time he he went away, everybody in the law enforcement moved, moved up the ladder. Say you were this, now you're this. Was my dad's crowd younger crowd yeah. rougher than you guys with the drugs and the? No, no, they, they weren't really doing a lot of drugs. They didn't do any. It was it, basically what we did was we we drank beer, right? And and, and well, like but I said, didn't Ten Hills Cafe get shut down for yes, being a? Yes, well, coke that was because they started snorting cocaine on the bar. They were snorting. Well, when did that show up, though? That showed up in the eighties. Okay. That showed up in the early eighties. And I would I would just split it out because I did. I only needed a line just to keep me going. I did, I wasn't snorting all the time, you know. Right. That was that was that was sort of how we. We got, went through it, but basically we drank the beer, and that's basically keep the mood. That's up how we grew up, wanting a good time. Everybody grew up, Danny, so drinking the beers and looking to have a good time, not looking to get into fights. But like I said, they're, they're, so those other kids, you felt like they didn't have as much. Uh, well, a lot of them didn't have two parents, right? You know, a lot of them didn't have the two parents, or if they did, some of them, the, some of the fathers were out with drunks. They had just got out of the war, and they're going through hard times, and alcohol got them through it. The worst one, I, uh, I don't understand. I, I, kid gave it to me once, and I, I, I was like, oh, my God, it was angel dust. And people loved it. To this day, they love angel dust. I couldn't talk. What? I, that's how you talk. That's how I talked. I only did it once because I thought it was a joint, and I was... I was drinking, and I says, oh, i got to slow down. Give me a little... And what drink. would you guys call it? Would you say uh, angel dust, or would they say... No, no, I, like- no I, I always thought, pot, give me a hit of the joint. No, but what would people call angel dust? Get angel out. dust. They didn't say other things like... No, not, oh, not that I know. Or, they yeah. just, I got angel dust, uh, you know. I'm sure the guys that did it all the time had their own slang for yeah. it. I, I just wasn't interested in... Well, would, could you tell, tell the guys that were doing it? They get real crazy. Oh yeah, they couldn't talk, and you got at, you got really, really, really strong. I had to pull this guy. He was a big kid. Um, a lot of people knew him. He was I liked him. He was always he was always sort of like Peck's bad boy. His name was Barry. I won't go into the his last name. Strong as an ox. But when he did the angel dust, oh my god, he had this guy down, one of the bartenders down, and was pounding on him, but was strangling him. I actually had to get my um, uh, it's a Friday night around nine o'clock, and places packed. I had to get you my. Remember what bar was it? Ten Hills, and I had to get my my uh, arm under his throat and start choking him, and he still wouldn't. And finally, I started going, Barry, Barry, it's banal, it's banal, it's banal, it's banal. That you, Johnny? As he's strangling this poor kid. Yes, Barry, let him go. You're going to kill him. And the kid was. The kid was starting to choke out. And uh, he, thank God he let him go. But that's what Angel Dust would do to you. It would give you, a, you know. Uh, I don't know why people did it. You know, a lot, a, a lot of guys, friends of mine from Charlestown would come and say, You're doing it, the dust? That's what they basically they called it. Any the dust, dust around. Yeah. yeah, the dust. Uh, I, and that was the hot thing. So oh, Coke was kind of came in first, Coke, and then yeah, Angel the Dust, Dust came yeah, in yeah, later. Yeah. You didn't hear much about heroin till, you, till um, probably when I was in my late 30s. Uh, heroin was starting to really build up a and lot. And those weren't the good time guys. No, no. They, those they were, were the, they become mooks. Right. When I mean a mook, you become, uh, hi, Bano, how are you doing? Oh, oh no! What are you doing to yourself? Yeah, but grow. I was very fortunate growing up. I really was. I I, uh, I loved it. I had a ball.